thank you each and every one of you that uh, is joining us tonight for Bible study. Uh, let us begin with a word of prayer. God, we're grateful and we thank you for this opportunity that you've allowed us to come together and to share together in your word. We pray, God, that you'll open up uh, our hearts and our minds to receive all that you have for us today. Thank you, God, in advance for what you're going to do and how you're going to bless us. This is our prayer. We pray now in Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen. So last week, we concluded with talking about how we are made one by the blood of Jesus Christ. Um, we may be grouped by color of skin. We may uh, be clustered by our commonalities. We might even be connected by blood ties. But the thing that makes us one is the blood of Jesus Christ. Um, and also last week, we share that sameness and oneness are not synonymous. Uh, sameness and oneness are not synonymous. We don't all have to be the same in order to be one. One of the scriptures uh, that perfectly illustrates that truth is found in the gospel as recorded by John, the first chapter, um, beginning at the 10th verse and concluding with the 14th verse. So that's uh, John's gospel, the first chapter, uh, beginning at verse 10 and concluding with verse 14. It says, he was in the world and the world was made through him or by him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to him, uh, gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but they were born of God. Uh, there's, there's a bond that this particular scripture is talking about that is closer than, it's tighter than, it's more connected than the things that make us the same. It's a connection that makes us one. In other words, uh, oneness trumps sameness. Uh, we can do more if we are one than we can if we're all the same, uh, which leads us back to the scripture we talked about last week, which was that um, we are all one body, but we're all different members of that one body. We have uh, the hand, the eye, the nose, all different uh, bodies, we, uh, or rather all different um, parts of the same body, though we have different functions. So oneness trumps sameness. Oneness trumps sameness. I'll never forget uh, one time someone asked me what was the biggest problem that I had experienced in moving people forward. Um, and my response was that the people that I was leading thought that oneness and sameness meant the same thing. Um, from the young to the old, everybody thought the same way. They acted in the same way um, and they operated in the same way. It was almost like a false sense of unity. And for the longest, I wanted them to know that it's all right to embrace your diversity. It's all right to embrace your uniqueness because at the end of the day, we are not the same. Um, you're 80, you're 20, you're not the same. You're male, you're female, you're not the same. Your gift is singing, your gift is praying. Those gifts are not the same. So we are different and, are, and we ought to be striving to be one, not being the same. So um, oneness is greater than sameness. Watch this, y'all. And even if we were the same, that doesn't mean that we're one. Um, because there are a whole lot of folks that are the same, but they're going in different directions. Um, one example I like to use is I love patronizing folks in my community. I love supporting our people. I love keeping the dollar circulated among our folks and in our community. What I find, though, 
is that it's difficult sometimes finding people in our community who have the same work ethic that I'm looking for, who have the same positive or, or who have positive references that I'm looking for, um, and the punctuality and the workmanship that I might be looking for. And so the question becomes, am I obliged to utilize them because we are the same, even though we're not one in the areas that I seek oneness in? And I would say, no, I'm not obligated um, just because we're the same, because if we're not one in certain areas, no matter how much of the same we are, it's difficult to be able to move forward together. If I need somebody who's punctual and you're always late, we can't work together. If I need somebody who can, who is willing to stand by their work, but now every reference that I talk to says that, you know, you leave a job half done, we can't work together. So, so oneness trumps sameness. Um, the homework assignment from last week was, since we are made one by the blood of Jesus Christ and the work of the cross, what can we do to help build oneness across racial lines? I'll say it again. Since we are made one by the blood of Jesus Christ and the work of the cross, what can we do to help build oneness across racial lines. So I'm, I'm hoping that folks took, a, took an opportunity to, to you know, go through that question and think about it. And, and we wanna, we wanna uh, open up right now to, to be able to, to see what some of the answers are that, that we came up with. What, 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 what can we do to help build oneness across racial lines? Two people raised their hand. I need your, your help. Uh, whoever is helping tonight. I see one hand raised. Go ahead, Falcon, I unmuted Thank you. you. He's still muted. Ah, there you go, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, Pastor, I go back to the teams, the team sports and maybe the starting point is it may it may not be possible to get a football player to want to be on the basketball team so if you have a basketball player who happens to be white or and you have a basketball team it might be easier to get somebody who has a common interest and a common goal to do that doesn't mean that just because the football player doesn't want to be on the basketball team that he's you know a bad guy but it's it's not the same 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 goal and it relates to and i relate that back to we have different parts to play we have different parts of the big body to play so that may be where you know the pastor or the leader may have to weave it to say okay we we're talking about a high school team we need a good high school football team we need a good high school basketball team we need a good church this ministry and we need a good church that ministry. So I think it's to summarize, find who, who all has the same sub goals to go down that direction. Okay, so align yourself kind of with uh, the people who have the, the sort of goals that you're trying to accomplish is one of the things that, okay. Who else? I see two more participants with their hands raised. Hazel Myers. All right. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, during the week when the sports of racial unrest and all the problems, I don't know if I'm answering the question or not, but uh, one of the points that was brought out that for us to overcome some of these var some of these problems is to <clears throat> uh, patronize our own blacks. Mm -hmm. As you said, we want to patronize black businessmen, but you know sometimes we're not open words, we're not reliable. So uh, how can we overcome this? I think we just need to try to correct within ourselves 
uh, problems, whereas we say we're going to be open at a certain time, making sure our prices are not over overcharged so that we can promote b Black business ones who uh, over help to overcome the problems nowadays. I don't know if I answered your question correctly. Well, basically what I heard you say was we got to work on ourselves. Amen. Um, and one of the ways to, to address and deal with uh, those issues is we have to work on ourselves. Um, and at the end of the day, what we discover, um, there's, there's a book by uh, Dr. Gary Smalley called The DNA of Relationships that suggests that you and I only have the power of one. The only, the only person that we could really change is the one that you look at in the mirror. Um, we can't change what other people do or think or say. We can only change us, uh, how we act, how we react. So yeah, we could work on ourselves. Thank you. I saw uh, Sister Geneva has her hand up. Okay. Uh, what I actually saw, and I actually took an action on, on this this week, is I give feedback. I'm willing to work with you, but I'm also going to say I'm going to give you feedback as to what's not working, and I ask that you consider it. Mm. It's that how do we work together? I want you to have my money. I want my money to stay in the community. I want you to grow, and I want you to be able to hear what I'm saying. So to speak up, but speak in a way that empowers the person, not break them down. Excellent, excellent. Anybody else, what are some uh, ways that we can help uh, build oneness across racial lines. And let me be clear, because I, I believe what Paul suggests in, in uh, the book of Corinthians, where he says that one, one plants, another waters, but only God provides the increase. So, so I believe that, that we have to do some planting and some watering, but the only person that's really going to make the, the changes that we're expecting um, are, are, are God. Um, but we can certainly do our part in helping to facilitate uh, that taking place. Any any other responses um, tonight? Nicole Before. Harris said changing mindsets, which is hard to do. Yes, it is. Changing mindsets is very difficult. Um, but there are there are some things that we could probably do um, that's that's in our control um, to to work towards helping people's mindsets change. Um, but yeah, again. We can plant, we can water, but uh, but but only God is gonna get to the heart of people, um, and then they change. I saw one more hand, and then I'll give a couple. Yes, sir. Ms. Butler said common ground. Find common ground. That's right. Finding common ground. Finding common ground, and then build on that. Build on that. I think that one of the things um, that is a common ground moment is when we saw the protests. Um, a lot of the protests. We saw all ethnicities at the protests. We saw all age groups at the protests. We saw a uh, different gender at the protests. We saw, you know, um, didn't matter what economic uh, status you were. We saw a whole range of people at the protests um, because we had a common cause, a common ground. But now we got to build on that because it's one thing for us to be able to march down the street together. It's quite another thing for us to live together, um, to uh, uh, to work together, to do all that we need to do together. So, um, I think I saw is is uh, Sister Geneva's hand up again. Yeah, I have one other thing to say. Yes, we have to be careful not to compare us with these corporations who have millions of dollars mm -hmm. that they can throw at and hire millions of people. We really got to be, it's like, you got to be willing to give your brother, a sister who have a, have a business, give them an opportunity to win. Yeah. So often when it doesn't work the first time, we really throw in the towel. Because specifically, I had the opportunity where I actually ended up losing a substantial amount of money working with an African-American landscaper. And, and I now, I said, no, I'm going to stay with it until I find an African-American landscaper who can do the work yeah. versus just going back and say, use, use everybody else that everybody else in the neighborhood uses. So yeah. you got to be willing to work with people. You got to have compassion and empathy and, and, and support people working. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. 
Um, in addition to that, you, you, you got to also, it, I guess it's all relative. If, if, I'm, if I'm sick and, um, and I need a doctor and I need that doctor to help me right away, um, I, I may not be able to wait for the, the, the African-American doctor, the black doctor that I may want who's in California. I may have to work with whoever I could get to. And, and my prayer is, it doesn't matter what color they are or what, what ethnicity they are, if their hands are guided by the Lord, then I know that I can get the help that I'm looking for. Um, I saw Sister Butler's hand raised. I'll give you my uh, couple examples or a couple of uh, things that I wrote down and then we'll move forward. Um, Pastor, one of the things that's happened in my neighborhood, when I moved here, we were still predominantly black. Mm. The interesting thing is in the last five or six years, this neighborhood now has become uh, a little United Nations. Okay. And we just had a new neighbor move in who I believe is from Morocco or somewhere. We've got Pakistani and we've got blacks, we've got whites. It's, and we're all friends. And you've got to get to know your neighbors, reach out to your neighbors. That way we get to know each other and find common ground between us so that we help each other out. Yeah. And that's the only way I think we're ever going to get through this is just to learn who we are, who the other person is, be kind, be compassionate, and all of those things that make a world a peaceful, godly world. It's yeah. very simple in my mind, but there are just too many um, problems out there. Um, that people won't even try. I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, and and the, the three things that I wrote down um, share or rather encompass everything that everybody has said um, so far tonight. I wrote down the first, first thing that we could do to help build oneness across racial lines is educate ourselves right. and others. Um, I, think, I think we first have to educate ourselves. The truth is some of us don't know what we believe and we don't even know what we, what our, our the, the word that we follow tells us that we ought to be, how we ought to be believing and how we ought to act with, when it comes to, to certain things like uh, even racial, um, uh, racial lines. So, so we gotta, we gotta educate our, ourselves, um, educate ourselves on on uh on everything that that pertains to to us trying to get together and get along together and then only then can we try to educate others um or try to uh change the mindset so to speak even though we can't change it but we can be a catalyst for that change the next thing after i wrote uh, after educate was example it we have to be we have to example what what we've learned we've got to practice what we preach it makes no sense for us to be preaching one thing and then we practice something else um so we got to practice what we preach by exampling it and then the third thing i wrote down was express it or extend it um we we got to educate ourselves and others example it and express it and extend it towards other people so like uh like you said sister butler we have to be willing to come together, find common ground, um, and, and begin to express uh, the love that we say we have, express and extend um, the, the grace and mercy and goodness that we claim to, to have as Christians. And when we begin to do that, we can at least take um, a couple of steps towards um, oneness or helping to build oneness across racial lines. So uh, those were three things that, that I, I, I wrote down. And, and I, there's a scripture in Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 through 22. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility. Hostility 
uh, divided Jews and Gentiles. Um, but what Jesus did is he came and he abolished the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two. So making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. He killed the hostility by being who he was and going to the cross in order to bring everyone together. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and peace to those who were near. So the message was not different. The message was the same, both peace to those who are far off, peace to those who are near, so that uh, we are no longer strangers and aliens, but we're now fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Um, so one of the questions that I, that I had was, uh, what are some of the challenges that we'll face uh, when it comes to cross-racial oneness? What are some of the challenges that we'll face? Now, one, one I heard already was, you know, a difference in mindset. Uh, Valerie Atkins raised her hand. Could we unmute her? Hi, Pastor. Um, yes. One of the challenges we're going to face is we're supposed to, a lot of these people are supposed to Christians. How do mm -hmm. I combat that? Like, I don't know what you, you've been taught, but apparently what you've been taught is not what I've been taught. How, how do we get past that? Yeah, yeah, we, well, and that's the thing. Um, that's why it's going to re require education on our part and education to others because, and, and prayer that God would uh, open up the hearts and minds of people to receive what they have not uh, been taught or what they might have been taught in error. Um, and that says that because one of the things that I wrote down as, as a, um, as a challenge is challenging the ignorance of people and ignorance in the terms of lack of understanding. Um, that, 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 is, that is certainly a big issue, I believe, um, that, that, you, that you just named, that, that we'll have um, to deal with, combating people who think and believe and have been taught one thing um, when the word of God actually says something else. Um, some other hands I saw. Dr. Geneva. Okay. Yeah, the challenges that we're going to face is that we got to, we, because the only person that you can change is you. Right. And we must listen to our listening that we have of other people. There's certain conversations, generational conversations that we've had in our families, that you hear that people say about people, you need to put that aside and create for yourself your relationship with those people that you're interacting with. So relationship, absolutely. Yeah, create, create, build new relationships, yes. Yeah, absolutely, I agree with that. Um, Sister Harris says, when the leader of the states does not speak out or support racial injustices, when racial injustices is at a high and is now an everyday something new is reported. Mm. When people that are supposed to guide us legally are at a divide constantly. Absolutely. When, when, when those who are in leadership, um, when those who, who, uh, who are, you know, who are at the helm refuse to, to acknowledge racial injustices, um, that, that, that is a challenge that we have to come back. Um, when people that are supposed to guide us legally are, are, at constant, are constantly divided. That is a challenge. Um, and part of, part of dealing with that challenge is, you know, we have to figure out, again, after we've educated ourselves, we got to educate others. We got to figure out 
who are the leaders that represent the interests that, that, that are our interests. And, and at that point, you know, who are we going to back? Who are we going to vote for? Who are we going to uh, uh, allow to represent us? I was, I was just watching um, a special while I was, well, not a special, a, uh, a program, I guess, before, before Bible study started um, with, with a couple of people on panel. And it was just amazing. They were all African-American, all black people on the panel, uh, but they were all coming from different angles. Some was conservative, some were liberal, um, some, some were supporters of Trump, um, some were, of course, anti-Trump. Um, and and part, of, part of the issue was I couldn't see any subject matter that they could come to an agreement on. And I said, Lord, we are we are in such we are so divided that uh, that 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 is a problem. And so yes, that is something that we have to combat. That is a challenge that we have to deal with. How to deal with this division, especially when it's top down um, division. Eugene Falcon. Yes. Yeah, Pastor. I was just was thinking about the analogy that that I made, and and now I'm having some trouble with that because my reference point presumed that if I went someplace and I'm a basketball player, it's very simplistic to find out who else plays basketball. But that may not be appropriate in this context, you, you know, with, with the Word of God. Okay, so what was what's your challenge? What where where are you challenged? I think, go, I think it goes back to what you just said. The, the 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 leader. I think it would start with the leaders to say, okay, is, is this group a group of basketball players? Is this group a group of Christians? Is this group of, that you're talking about? Are are they in sync with us as a group? And then we can then go down. Well, we have these things that can can attract you, whether or not it's this ministry or that ministry or. You know, you know these type of things to come in, but you've already um, found out that they're in sync with with some basic common beliefs. So let me let me just, if I can, um, share with you um, using that analogy that you gave. Um, I I remember years ago um, I shared and I shared this in preaching about we've got next that I used to go from court to court. Um, and play basketball, pick up, pick up ball. Um, and I would take a group of people with me. Um, now, aside from all of us being able to play the game of basketball, another commonality that we had was that we were all believers. And, and oftentimes we would go places and play and it would start off as a competitive game um, and then it would end off with prayer and, and sharing the word of God. So, so it, it is certainly possible um, to, 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 you know, to cross. And again, we were, we were going to all sorts of uh, cities around, around the area. So we were coming across all races and everything. And, and we, would, we would somehow, some way, um, on occasions, we would have the opportunity for witness, um, even in that moment. But, um, but again, like like you said, it, it started with um, our oneness, and then we took our oneness and was able to share with others, and and kind of people kind of saw our oneness, and then said, "Hey, how do you get that? Or where's that come from?" Oh, well, great. I'm glad you asked. And then we were able to, to do it. So again, I think it's why it's important for us to know ourselves, um, to educate others, and then example it. Example what it means. Um, you know, example it. And I think that that's, that's, uh, that's important. Um, all right. So those are some issues that, that, uh, that challenge us when it comes to this racial oneness. Let's take a look at the video, the second uh, part of Oneness Embrace that Tony Evans shares, and then we will, we will continue in our discussion on that. Screen. I 
know what? There we go. All right. Two men were driving down the highway arguing about what race God was. It's a black man and a white man, and they got so distracted in their argument that they ran off the road, flipped the car over, both were killed. They opened their eyes at the pearly gate, greeted by Peter, and Peter says, is there anything you would like to, to know on our tour of heaven? They said, yes, we want to see God, because we've been arguing. That's what got us here on what color God was. He said, well, God, let me take you right to him. So uh, Peter led them into the throne room, and weren't they shocked when the first words out of God's mouth was, Buenos dias, senores. Well, that little humorous story uh, says that you can't box God in to your perceptions of him. That's where we've failed, because we've allowed our cultural perspective on God to color how we relate to one another. Instead of centering in on who God says he is, we center in on uh, what we think he should be based on who we perceive ourselves to be. Uh, I wrote Oneness Embrace so that we would get God's view on race, not men's argument about race. One of the great stories that deals with race in the Bible is taken from John 4, Jesus' encounter with the Samaritan woman. Now you have to understand that Samaritans and Jews didn't get along. They didn't roll together because... Uh, they were at an animosity with one another. All the way from 722 BC, uh, they weren't uh, the best of friends. In fact, when Jesus says that he had to go from Judea in the south to Galilee in the north, uh, every Orthodox Jew would bypass Samaritan. They would call them the Samaritan dogs, the half-breeds, those who had uh, interracially married the Gentiles. And so this, this chaos of race uh, just dominated the environment in the New Testament world. But John, the writer, tells us that Jesus had to pass through Samaria. Why? Because at 12 noon, he was going to meet a woman there with a spiritual need. In other words, in spite of what the culture said, what the traditions were of the day, Jesus elevated the spiritual above the racial, the cultural. I've got to meet a woman because she has a spiritual need, and I'm not going to let the segregation of my society governed my conduct. He meets the woman at the well, and when he does, he asks her in verse 7 of John 4, give me a drink. The woman is mesmerized. In fact, she's stupefied. Because she said, how is it that you being a Jew ask me for a drink since I'm a Samaritan woman, since the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans? She knew he was Jewish. He didn't say he was Jewish, so that means he must have looked Jewish, dressed Jewish. There was something clearly Jewish about him which means that Jesus didn't give up who he was to reach somebody else. He embraced his Jewishness and let other people see it. But he didn't let his Jewishness interfere with his godliness. His commitment to God overrode his culture, and it was visible. Not only in how he looked or dressed, but how he acted. He asked her for a drink. He was actually going to put his Jewish lips to her Samaritan cup, and that blew her mind. She said, Jews don't do what you just did. That's because Jesus wasn't Jewish first. He was God's son first. He wasn't going to let the cultural day in which he lived dictate his actions. God is not asking white people to become black or black people to become white or red people to become yellow or yellow people to become red. He's not asking you to like soul music, and he certainly isn't asking me to like country and western, thank God. What he is asking each is to not let your race or culture get in the way of your Christian commitment. Don't deny it, embrace it, but don't let it interfere with God's call on your life first. Only when we make that kind of commitment will we begin to see the kind of oneness that God had intended for his people to have. Well, this sparks a conversation. Jesus begins telling the woman about some water he has that will spring up into a well of everlasting life simply for a request for a drink. The one who asked for a drink is now offering living water. This woman has never heard of this before. She style. But you see, is there? when you are willing to Sorry. deal with You're the now. you get quicker access to their soul and their sins. A lot of people want to deal with folks' souls who don't want to drink from their cup. 
We want to get them to heaven, but not have to cross them on earth. And therefore, what you do is block the gospel and block the kingdom of God by illegitimate racial division. Jesus didn't do that. He was going to drink from her cup. Now he was able to talk about how she was living. She says, our fathers worshiped in this mountain, in verse 20, and you people, huh? a racial slur if I ever heard one, say that we ought to worship in Jerusalem. Uh, we don't agree on our worship styles, backgrounds, or history. She said our fathers, my daddy, my granddaddy, my great-granddaddy, my great-great-granddaddy, taught us this is where you go to church, this is how you worship. Your daddy, great-great-great-granddaddy, great-granddaddy, great-great-granddaddy, says that's where you ought to go to church. So I'm all confused about what this religious thing is all about. Now, when she brought up his cultural difference before, Jesus never responded. You're a Jew. But now she brings it up and brings up worship. Jesus does have something to say about that because that involves race as it relates to his father. Jesus says to her with no uncertain terms, woman, you worship what you know not. God is a spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In other words, if you're going to bring my dad into this conversation, I have something to say. And race has got to take back burner to the right heart and the right information. If you don't have the right heart and you're not operating on the right information, you don't get access to God. So you and your people are wrong. You never let racial identity interfere with biblical veracity and truth. The Bible must trump your race. Enjoy your race. Celebrate your race. Get all out of your race you can get unless it crosses the truth as God defines it, not as the culture defines it. It's not black truth. There's not white truth. There's God's truth, and that's the only truth that there is. And the moment you start to thread God's truth through your sin and adjust it, your race has now just gotten out of order. And our problem today is we've appealed to our culture and let it ax God's word. Hmm. Peter tried to do that. Peter was eating ham sandwiches with the Gentiles. He found out the Gentiles didn't know how to cook. God now told him he could eat pig feet, hog maws, chitlins, you know, ham hocks, because of that dream he had on top of the roof. And so he started fraternizing with the Gentiles in Galatians chapter 2, beginning with verses 11 following. He's now eating with the Gentiles, and they are probably sucking on some neck bones now that they can eat some stuff they couldn't eat before. But then some of his boys from the hood showed up. Some of the Jews sent from James showed up and intimidated Pastor Peter, the head of the Gentiles, head of, excuse me, Pastor Peter, the head of the Jerusalem uh, uh, contingency there, and the saints from Antioch, so that Peter withdrew from the Gentiles he had been eating with because his own race showed up, and he didn't want his race offended that he was eating with folks who were unacceptable to his race, even though they were Christians. Some of the other Jews were with Peter. They left with him because the mist in the pulpit is the fog in the pew. If the preachers don't get it right, the followers don't get it right, which has been one of the major problems of race in the country and race in the church. So that it even says in Galatians 2, Barnabas was carried away by their hypocrisy. Not my boy Barney, anybody but Barney. Barney is the encourager. He was raised in Cyprus. That's a Gentile colony. He was raised with Gentiles, went to school with Gentiles, played ball with Gentiles. That's how bad racism is. It'll make a good man bad. Now, he would have gotten away with it too, but uh, Paul wanted some pig feet too. So he had showed up and saw what Peter did. And he says, and I condemn Peter before them all because he was not acting in concert with the truth of the gospel. I thought the gospel was how you get to heaven. It is, but it's not only that. It's also the unity that the gospel gives to God's people. And he says, you're an embarrassment, Peter, to the gospel because you're breaking up something God is trying to build up by illegitimate racial divide. In fact, my favorite verse in the Bible is uh, Galatians 2.20. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, as Christ who lives in me, the life which I now live. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Well, that verse comes at the end of the story. Your identity is to be in Christ, not in culture. As long as culture supports Christ, enjoy it. Eat it up. When culture diverts from Christ, your culture is wrong, not Christ. The story ends up with Jesus spending the weekend 
with the Samaritans. In a couple of hours, he gets to do what 100 years haven't accomplished because he was about his father's business, not trying to placate his race. Embrace your race, but don't allow it to overrule God. If you do, you lose God, even though you may keep your race. All right. All right. So, um, what are your thoughts about what Dr. Tony Evans just shared? Any thoughts about what we just heard from Dr. Evans? Geneva. <laughs> okay, who are we acknowledging? Because I see some hands raised. Miss Geneva. Okay, thank um, you. I can't unmute her though. Oh, okay. I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Uh, it reminds me of a conversation I had with report uh, with Reverend Porter a number of number of years ago. So uh, I went to him and I said, Rev and he was preaching and and all. And I was attending church and I went to him and I said, Reverend Porter, I won't be at church every Sunday. Hmm. I said I work and and I'm 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 out of town and all. And when I'm in town, I'll be in church. And when I'm out of town, I'll be out of town. It doesn't make me any less of a believer. And Reverend Porter said, okay, in his, his nice words. And he said, this is what you do. You take the Bible with you. And in the morning, you read Psalms. And at night, you read Proverbs. That's what you do. And I said, yes, sir. And because there were people who said, well, you know, she can't be a real Christian because she's not here all the time. Hmm. So I really get, I really, really get the message that he was saying about culture. And, and, and yeah, I, I get it. So that's what I got out of that. All right. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Um, who else do we have? Welcome. Um, I, I think that what he was what he was talking about now brings back the sports thing in context because he was talking about if you want to if you want to be a winning team if you want to be under the cover of God then it doesn't matter about your color it matters about how you play together and if you know if the, you got to run the right plays you got to practice you got to you know do all the things that win and it doesn't matter so what what he said go back it goes back to the Bible that's the playbook. Yeah. It doesn't matter the color. Sister Dawson said, it's okay to love your race, but treat everyone with love and respect. Yeah, I, I, I like I like that. I like that. He he really he really emphasized how um you know embrace your 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 uniqueness, embrace who you are, love who you are. Um the, the only problem is that when we put who and what we are above what God um, expects us to be um, to each other and to one another. So um, one of the things that he said, which was interesting in the very beginning, he said, we can't allow our cultural perspective on God to color how we relate with one another. We can't allow our, cult our um, cultural perspective on God to color how we relate with one another. And my question is, is that difficult to do? Is that difficult to do? Do you ever notice how uh, we always um, we always want to like like for instance the two gentlemen in the beginning who were arguing about is God white or is God black? Um, and then the funny story he tells is they get to they get to heaven and 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 God speaks to them in Spanish. Um, but but it, it was it was a joke. But that's that's sort of what we do sometimes. We allow our cultural perspective um, on God to color how we relate with one another. So then, you know, it becomes difficult for us being a black church, a predominantly black church, 
to now go and fellowship with, you know, churches who may not be uh, of the same hue that we are, who may not um, sing the way we sing, who may not present the word the way we present, um, because we allow sometimes our cultural perspective on God to color um, uh, how we view, I'm sorry, um, how we relate to one another. Sister Hicks says, we must keep God first, all that we do. We, um, if we follow his word, you will always come out on top. If more people allowed God to <clears throat> the captain of their life, oneness begins. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Can anybody, um, can anybody speak to, to whether or not they see how we push our cultural perspective of God um, onto how we relate to others. Has there ever been a time that you have been in a service um, uh, of a different, you know, background, a different area, and you say, boy, I sure couldn't be in this service every week. You know, <laughs> I mean, that, that, that sometimes we, we, we push our narrative, our cultural narrative on other things. Um, on other people, and it affects our relationship with others. Oh, we can't, you know, child, you, if we're going to go to church together, you're going to have to come to my church because I can't go to your church. It right. happened to me when I went to a um, Catholic church, and um, it was so quiet and uh, <laughs> solemn. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, this ain't going to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, so again, um, what, what is... I think we have to really look at what God's view of race and ethnicity is. Um, and I have a couple of scriptures that I want to share. One is Galatians 2, 7 through 14. It says, on the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, and this is that story that he was talking about with respect to Peter um, and Paul, just as Peter had been entrusted with the gospel to the circumcised, for he who worked through Peter for his apostolic ministry to the circumcised worked also through me for mine to the Gentiles. And when James and Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given to me, they gave the right hand of fellowship to Barnabas and me, that we should go to the Gentiles and, um, and they to the circumcised. Only they asked us to remember the poor, the very thing I was eager to do. It says, but when Cephas, Peter, came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James, he was fearing the circumcision party. And the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with him so that even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that their conduct was not in step with the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, if you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you force the Gentiles to live like Jews? Um, I love it because Paul called Peter on his stuff. He called him on it and said, listen, man, if this gospel is for everybody, um, but and, but you are you are telling these uh, these uncircumcised Gentiles that the only way that they could be a part of, of this is they have to become Jews. How hypocritical is that of you um, to, to say that? Um, and I love that. Another scripture, Revelation 5, verse 9 through 10. And they sang a new song saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open up its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for people from every tribe and language and people and nation, and you have made them a kingdom um, and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth, talking about Jesus. Um, and what Jesus did on the cross uh, brought us all together. Um, and then certainly the scripture that he um, alluded to when he talked about the Samaritan woman is found in John chapter 4 verses 3 through 10. He left Judea, Jesus, departed again for Galilee, and he had to pass through Samaria. Um, I like the King James Version said he must um, go through um, Samaria. So he came to a town of Samaria called Sakar 
near the field that Jacob had um, given to his son Joseph, Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside a well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it was that saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Um, so here's the question that I wanted to ask. Uh, what can we learn? from Jesus regarding how to approach racial differences. If we look at this story about him and the Samaritan woman, what are some of the things, the key um, takeaways that we can get from how we can um, begin approaching racial differences? What did Jesus do? How did Jesus combat um, this particular issue of racism? Or, of, or rather, of racial indifference, I should say. All right. So, all right, Sister Geneva. <laughs> First of all, we need to look and stop instantly saying it's racism mm. when there's a difference. I, it might be. I'm not saying that it's not. Right. I think we really need to stop and take a step back. And And if it is, then create a way to have it not be that to where that person learned something. So mine is really think before you just blurt out. Uh, he, he, she's a racist, they, this, this, that, any other. Yeah, that, that's, that's good. I, I, I could go with that. Um, def definitely be more informed and make more informed uh, uh, analysis of, uh, analyses, I guess, of a, of a situation before you just, um, automatically he's racist she's racist um anybody else what what can we learn from how jesus um approached this particular incident um with the samaritan woman what can we learn from it i mean one thing we can learn is um he didn't shy away he confronted it right um he went and confronted the 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 particular issue um and in spite of what the culture said and what the traditions of the day were, um, he, uh, he elevated the spiritual above the cultural. He elevated the spiritual above the cultural. And I think that's, that, that's important. I think sometimes we have to, um, we have to begin to, to look at things from a spiritual perspective um, not, and again, like Sister DeLois said, embrace our culture, love our culture. It's all right, but don't allow our culture to supersede the spiritual. Um, uh, he said, I'm not going to let uh, the segregation of the society govern my conduct. Um, do we allow that to happen to us? Do we allow um, the segregation of society to govern the way we conduct ourselves? Yes, sir. But Steven, can we unmute him? You have to unmute yourself. Uh, there you go. I said, I think one of the things that he also did was he embraced the, the difference rather than run away from it. Yes, yes. And I, 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 I love that. He, he embraced the difference. He said, okay, yes, you're, you're Samaritan. I'm a Jew. You've been taught that you worship on Mount Gerizim, um, and we worship um, um, on the other mountain. He said, but like you said, he embraced who they were. I love it. I think uh, Dr. Cornell West um, calls it contextualism. Um, or he said, we have to learn how to deal with people in the context of who they are. Um, and that's what he did. He addressed her in the context of who she was. She was a woman. She was a Samaritan woman. She was a Samaritan woman who came to the well at the wrong time of the day. And she came to the well at the wrong time of the day because of the issues that she was dealing with. Um, and that was probably her place of retreat 
from the oppression and different things that she had to deal with uh, back in, in, in her hometown and with what she was dealing with. So I agree with that and I, I appreciate that. Anything else, anything else? We got one or two more minutes. Anything else that we can glean from how Jesus approached that particular situation? We're all the same. Uh oh. Um, yeah, we're all the same. If we take away the skin, we are all the same. There's a commercial that shows two little children running um, to meet each other, a black and a white, just like brothers. Yeah, yeah, and 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 um, and I I think that that's what that's what what we are supposed to. That's what's supposed to bind us together spiritually is understanding that, hey, you can be black, you could be white, you could be male, you could be female, you could be, you know, young, you could be older, you know, it doesn't matter um, because at the end of the day, what binds us is greater than what separates us or it should be what binds us is greater than what separates us. Um, and embracing oneness um, does not mean that you have to change who you are. You don't have to change who you are in order to embrace oneness. Um, Jesus's commitment to God overruled the culture. So don't let our race and culture get in the way of our Christian commitment. Um, I'm, I'm going to close out with this. Our identity should be in Christ and not in the culture. Um, although, although, that, although we are who we are, we ought to be identified um, by who we are in Christ. Um, and, and if we could only get that out. If we could only get to the point where we are identified by who we are in Christ, it will help tremendously with our dealings with um, with the racial indifferences that we're dealing with. So um, that that that's the presentation that we wanted to share with tonight, um, and and we'll continue. We'll continue having this discussion. Um, there's I think four more um, segments that Dr. Evans talks about, and we'll continue to have this discussion for the next couple of weeks. Um, as we continue um, to move towards oneness and not sameness, um, oneness and not sameness. So any other questions or comments or concerns? No? All right, all right. Well, if that's the case, then we're going to turn it on over to our deacons and we're gonna get ready to leave this Zoom and go back to our room. <laughs> Let us bow our heads in a world of prayer. Almighty God, who is the maker of heaven and the maker of earth. These are your earthly people who have problems in their life. You've been mighty good to us on this day. Let us see day and now you have brought darkness upon us where we can lie down and rest this night you watched over us all day didn't let no hurt harm or danger befall any of us you took care of our loved ones some were sick some had passed away some look for a place to live. Some look to the hospital for help. But you are the greatest helper of all of us. Yes, yes. You've been mighty kind to us down through the generations. So we ask your blessings upon your people, wherever they are, whatever condition they find themselves tonight. We know you have already worked it out. Just give us a little more faith to hold on and to hold out. Bless this pastor, bless these listeners, bless churches all over the United States. Whatever is going on in the world, you are aware of it and you can bring us all through if we hold to your unchanging hand. We thank you for the food we eat we thank you for the water we drink. We thank you for the place we live. We thank you for the churches we attend and call out tonight. 
bless each and every one as they lie down and get a good nice rest. Go with those who might be traveling. Get them safe passage over the highways, the airways, or the railways. Whatever way they are traveling, give them the safe trip going and coming. And bless their homes and their houses. We ask your blessings upon all sick, wherever they are, whatever condition they find themselves. Then we ask your blessings upon Reverend Wallace. And we thank you, dear God, for giving his wife a birthday this week. And we pray for her that she have enjoyed wherever she might be. Thank you for what you have did and thank you for what you're going to do. In the precious name of your darling son, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we pray that you enjoyed the message. If you are looking for a church home, come and worship with us during our Sunday morning service starting at 9.45 a.m. We are located at 2387 Morris Avenue in Scotch Plains, New Jersey. And be sure to visit our website at www.stjohnscotchplains.org for more information. Here at the Dome, we enter to worship, leaving to serve.